It's amazing, I had an interesting conversation, this is not part of the sermon, but it will tie into an amazing conversation with my eight-year-old this week because she came into my office while I was working on my sermon and she, she started asking me questions. The first question is, Daddy, what are you doing? While I'm working on my sermon, okay, what are you preaching on this week? My eight-year-old is trying to ask me intellectual, theological questions and and I love being able to ask her and I started, I started telling her what I was working on and I said, you know, baby girl, I want to tell you, I said, the most amazing thing. I said, I'm reading this passage, but last week I preached on the passage, we've been preaching out of Exodus 34, where God talks about his character. And I said, and now I'm out of Daniel chapter 9, and, and, and you start to read how Daniel is praying God's character back to God. And I said, uh, I told my baby girl, I said, you have to read scripture as a whole. And I said, it's amazing how that this whole story is connected. And my baby girl just looked at me and said, that's awesome, Daddy. I don't know if that's what she said, but that's what I heard. That is what I heard. That's awesome, Daddy. To be having, have a theological discussion with an eight-year-old is amazing. I don't know if she understood a single thing I said. But it was, it was a great week to be in the Word of God. I want to start off with a story tell you about a man his name was honey h-o-n-i i thought they said honey at first when i heard this story but it's honey and about 60 years before jesus was born the historian josephus writes about this man named honey and, and there was a drought in jerusalem there was a drought in jerusalem and, and they called for honey because honey was known to be the rainmaker. He got his nickname, the Circle Drawler, from an incident of bold prayer to God. During a particular harsh drought in Palestine, Hani pleaded to God to have mercy on his people. When he received no answer, he drew, and, and the drought persisted, he decided to draw a circle around himself and vowed not to step out of it until the Lord gave rain. It said, the story goes like this, it said, Hani, the circle drawer, prayed for rain. He said, go and take the clay to the ovens for the Passover so that they would not soften in the rain which is coming. Hani said, the rain is coming. He prayed, but it did not rain. So what did he do? He drew a circle and stood in the middle of it and said, Lord of the world, your children have turned to me. For before you, I am a member of the family. I swear by your great name, I am simply not moving from here until you take pity on your children. And the story goes, it began to rain little drops. And Hani said to God, that's not what we wanted, God. We need the rain. We need rain for filling up the cisterns, the pits, and the caverns. And it began to rain. It began to rain violently, almost like a hurricane-type rain. And Hani cried out to God. He said, God, that's not the kind of rain we need. But rain of goodwill, blessing, and graciousness. We need rain to fill up the cisterns, the pits, and the caverns. And the story goes as Hani prayed from inside the circle that it rained. It rained a steady rain. It rained steady for many days, filling up the cisterns, the pits, and the caverns. And Israel had to flee from Jerusalem up to the temple because of the rain. And Hani drew a circle around himself and prayed for rain. This week, as I said, I'm going to be looking at Daniel chapter 9. If you have your scriptures, you can turn with me to Daniel chapter 9. I'm not going to read the whole chapter because it gets a little bit lengthy, but I do want you to go back this week and read the whole chapter. But I'm going to point out some things in Daniel chapter 9. It starts off with Daniel reading his Bible. It's beautiful. It says this. It says... Daniel was studying the writings of the prophet. Now, Daniel's an old man. He's getting up there in age. I presume he's about Tom Porter's age. He's getting old. He's getting up there. But here is a man old in his age still reading his Bible. 
still reading his Bible. And he's reading in Jeremiah where Jeremiah was saying that Jerusalem must lie desolate for 70 years. Most scholars believe that Daniel was reading from, Je from, from Jeremiah chapter 29. Does that verse not sound familiar? Does that chapter not sound familiar? Is it not where we started our journey seven weeks ago and God has a plan for your life? Daniel is reading from Jeremiah 29. And verse 10, it reads this. Jeremiah chapter 29. Come on, Paige. There you go. Chapter 10, verse, verse 10 reads this. The truth is that you will be in Babylon for 70 years, but then I will come for you. All the good things I have promised, I will bring you home again. It says, I will bring you home again. And that 70 years is important because Daniel begins doing the math in his head. Daniel was one of the first people taken to Babylon during the invasion. He was one of the first people captured in the Babylonian captivity that we read. And if Daniel's math is correct, which it usually is, they only have three more years. And Daniel's sitting there going, we only have three more years. And you keep reading. Daniel kept reading, reading in verse 11. It says, I have plans for you. We have said that verse so many times, you should have it memorized by now. I have a plan for you, plan to prosper you. Excuse me. In verse 12, it says, in those days when you pray, I will listen. Very important verse stuck in the middle of two very important verses. First, I have a plan for you. Verse 12, in those days when you pray, I will listen. Verse 13, if you seek me, you will find me. If you seek me with all your heart. If you seek me, you will find me. If you seek me with all your heart. And in chapter 29, verse 13, Jeremiah, of the, Jeremiah the prophet uses two different words here for the word seek. This, this is very important for us to understand because the first word is bakash and the second word is darash. Darash is translated into to treat or to frequent, to seek and ask specifically in worship. And bakash is to search out specifically in prayer. So here in Jeremiah 29, 13, he's saying, if you seek me frequently, not just one, don't just come to me and ask for a cookie, but keep coming to me. If you seek me repeatedly in a prayerful brokenness of a state, you will find me. If you continue to seek me, if you continue to pour your heart out to me, if you continue to look for me, you will find me. That is what Jeremiah is saying. If you prayerfully and, and, and honestly and wholeheartedly seek me, and not just once, but repeatedly, you will find me. You will find me. And in Daniel chapter 9, verse 3, Daniel draws a circle around himself and begins to pray to God. He begins to pray. He, he draws a circle around himself and prays. Because Daniel was compelled to pray. Daniel was compelled to pray. He was reading his scriptures. He was seeing the promises of God. He was reading the promises of God. But then he was seeing the desolation of his world. He was seeing the problems in his world. He saw the needs of the people and he was compelled to pray. He was compelled to cry out to God. He was compelled to open up to God. It says he's compelled by the promises of God found in Scripture. God, you said in 70 years, it's been 67 years, we have three more years to go. God, your promises said we're going to go home soon. But I told you verse 12 was important. It says, if you seek me, if you ask for me. In verse 12, it says, in those days when you pray, I will listen. Well, in Ezekiel 37, 36, it says, I have, 
I have all this to do for the nation of Israel, but I have not been asked. And Ezekiel says, I have so much to give you, but I haven't been asked. And so Daniel starts asking. Daniel starts crying out to God. Daniel starts to seek the Almighty God. And he begins praying God's Word back to God. Some theologians call that reverse thunder. It's holding God to His Word. It's, it's saying, God, you said, if I seek you, I will find you. God, you said you will restore us. God, you said you will bring us back in 70 years. God, you said... And Daniel begins to pray God's promises back. He's compelled to pray. Daniel wasn't just compelled to pray, but he was centered in prayer. He was focused in prayer. He was setting his spiritual compass to God. In verse 3 it says this, He turned to the Lord God. He turned to God. That means he turned to God and he turned away from everything else. This is the kind of prayer that we need to be focused on God. We need to turn to God and away from everything else. It says he fasted. That not just means he went without food. That means he went without distraction. He fasted. He put away the cell phone. He put away the TV. He told the kids to leave him alone. I'm praying. When's the last time you were able to be centered in prayer where you cast out all the distractions of life and you just turned to God and said, God, here I am, I am here, I am looking to you, I am crying out to you, I am compelled to pray because I see the needs of our world and I am centering myself now in the circle that I have drawn around me. It's drawing your circle and making time for God and turning away from everything else in desperation. Psalm 52. 52, broken in a contrite heart, I will not despise. I think it's 51. We read that earlier. I, a broken in a contrite heart, I will not despise. What I need is a broken spirit. Joel chapter 2 verse 12 this is what the Lord God says turn to me now while there is time give me your hearts come fasting weeping and mourning don't tear your clothes in grief but tear your hearts instead return to the Lord God for he is merciful and compassionate slow to anger and filled with unfailing love where have we heard that before only the last five weeks I've been preaching on it I hope you guys have been paying attention he says, he says, return to the Lord your God, for he is merciful. Hanun, Han, we've talked about this. Compassionate, Raham, slow to anger, Eric, Apayim, and filled with said unfailing love. And we read the character of God being shown through in Scripture time and time again. And God says, return to me, because I am who I say I am. I am God. Daniel was compelled to pray. He saw the needs and he was compelled to pray. Daniel was centered in prayer. But Daniel was also confident in prayer. It says, I turn to the, he says this, I turn to the Lord my God. That's a very powerful pronoun right there. I turn to the Lord my God. Daniel went to the throne knowing who his God was. He went to the throne knowing what his God can do. I went to my God. It says he went with confidence. He confessed his sins. He recognized his sinful nature. He said he was sorry. And he entered the covenant relationship with God. God is your God. God said, if you break your heart before me, I will be your God and you will be my people He went to God in confidence, knowing who God's character was. Look, look at the wording in verse 4. Daniel uses the word hesed. You will always fulfill your promises and your loving kindness. He went to God with God's own character. God, you're abounding in goodness. In verse 13, he says, We refuse to seek mercy. We have not yet made a prayer to be sorry. 
But God, we recognize your truth. And met your faithfulness, your reliability. In verse 18, not because of our righteousness, not because we deserve it, but because you are merciful. Rahim, the God of compassion, deeply stirred in your inner being for us. Listen to how Daniel prays to God. He prays with confidence, God, you are a God of compassion and mercy. You are a God slow to anger and filled with unfailing love and truth. And I am crying out to my God. And in verse 19, Daniel says, listen and act for your name's sake. He's saying for the sake of the name of God, I pray that you would act. Not for our name, God, but for yours. Would you honor your name? And he pleads to God's character. You see, Daniel knows who his God is. Daniel knows who his God is. He said, this is my God. He knows who God is. Verse 4, I prayed to the Lord, my God and confessed, Oh Lord, you are a great and awesome God. You fulfill your covenant and you keep your promises of unfailing love to those who love and obey your commands. God is faithful. And Daniel was confident in his God. My question is, are you confident in your God this morning? Do you know your God this morning? Do you know your God like Daniel knew his God? And God can deliver the people from the hands of the enemy. If God can raise Jesus from the dead, then God can, then God can deliver you today from whatever you're going through. Daniel was compelled to pray. Daniel was centered in prayer. Daniel was confident in prayer. Daniel was contrite in prayer. And he went to God and he bore his soul out and said, "God, I'm sorry." He used plural nouns. God, we are sorry. He took it upon himself. He stopped blaming others and took the sin of the people as his own. Come humbly before the come humbly in need of God's mercy. Lord, we need you. Lord, we need you. And I asked you this last week. When's the last time you confessed your sins before the Almighty God? When's the time you came to God with a contrite heart and a broken spirit? See, we do that because we want to make sure there's no barriers between us and God. We want to make sure there's no barriers there. So we cry out to God. Daniel prayed with a contrite heart, but Daniel also played, prayed with clarity. He said, for your name's sake, listen and act. Verse 18, we do not ask because we deserve it, but we ask because you are merciful. And he pleaded on behalf of the nation of Israel. And he said, God, you said, you said 70 years, it's been 67. God, you said, he played with, prayed with clarity. The last time you prayed specifically and with clarity to God. A lot of times our prayers are generalizations. God, help us. You know what I pray for every night when I lay my head down? I pray for strength for my family. My wife's been dealing with a lot for, for with her schooling. I pray for strength for my wife. I pray for my kids specifically, but you know what else I pray for? I pray for a Jeep Wrangler Rubicon every night before I go to bed. And it sounds silly and it sounds selfish, but I pray to God because I pray specifically to my God. And that begins a big conversation between me and God. I pray specifically. I don't just pray for a blessing. I pray for an overflow of blessing. I pray with clarity. Matthew 7, 8, 7, 7, and 8 says this, Keep on asking and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will open for when everyone who asks receives. 
That's a promise that God has given us. And sometimes we take that as a half-hearted promise. That's God saying, if you come to me with a broken heart and a contrite spirit, and you ask, and you're, you're, you come to me broken before me, and you declare me as your God, and you ask for it, you will receive. How confident do you go before God? How clear, clear do you go before God? Philippians 4, 6, don't be pulled in different directions or worried about a thing, but be saturated in prayer throughout each day, offering your faith-filled requests before God with overflowing gratitude. Tell Him every detail of your life. Then God's wonderful peace that transcends human understanding will make the answers known to you through Jesus Christ. Tell Him every detail of your life. When's the last time you told God every detail of your life? Sometimes we think He just knows. He knows, so I don't have to worry about it. The beautiful thing is, God wants to be in conversation with you. And Daniel prayed with clarity. He prayed in Jesus' name. John 14, 13, Whoever, whenever you ask in My name, I will do it so that the Father may be glorified through the Son. Daniel prayed to God and use His name. God, Your name be glorified. Daniel prayed with clarity. But Daniel also prayed till it was confirmed. He drew a circle in the ground and he prayed until it was confirmed. Keep reading Daniel chapter 9. It says, Gabriel, your prayers have been heard. You are highly esteemed. The angel Gabriel looked at Daniel and said, your prayers have been heard you are highly esteemed. God's prayer was answered immediately through encouragement and enlightenment. As you pray, He will give you insight and understanding. As you pray, the focus will get clearer and sharper. I guess the best way to describe it is you ever look through a pair of binoculars? My daughter gave me a pair of binoculars the other day and I'm sitting there doing this and I couldn't see anything. It was all blurred until I started turning that little knob in the center. And then the image got clear and clear and clear. When we cry out to God, the image gets clearer, the image gets sharper, and God will answer. And Daniel's prayer was ultimately answered. You keep reading, keep reading. It says this. It says this in Daniel chapter 9. It says. After this period of 62 sets of seven, the anointed one will be killed, appearing, according, appearing to have been accomplished to nothing. The anointed one. Daniel is being given a glimpse into the Almighty God's plan of Jesus Christ, the anointed one being sacrificed for sin. Daniel had his prayer answered ultimately in Jesus Christ, but he also had his prayer answered specifically. Ezra chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. In the first year of King Cyrus of Persia, the Lord filled with prophecy. He had given through Jer fulfilled the prophecy given through Jeremiah. The stir he stirred the hearts of Cyrus and put this proclamation in writing to send it throughout his kingdom. This is what the kingdom of Cyrus of Persia said. The Lord, the God of heaven, has given me the, the kingdoms of the earth. He has appointed me to build him a temple at Jerusalem, which is in Judea. Any of you who are his people may go to Jerusalem in Judea to rebuild his temple of the Lord the God of Israel who lives in Jerusalem, and may your God be with you. The king says, you can go home. Seventy years after the, after the capture of the people, he says, I will fulfill my promise. Jared, Daniel, I have answered your prayer. You can go home. Your people can go home. Daniel prayed until it was confirmed. I don't believe he stopped praying. For three years, Daniel prayed, God, God, we want to go home. In Ezra chapter 1, the king says, your people can go home. And you can see in the distance a withered, weary old man. Too old to make the journey. A withered, weary old Daniel watching the promise of God unfold in his life. 
Sometimes the prayer takes three years. But the promise of God, pray until it's confirmed. Too often we stop praying. Too often when we don't see results, we stop praying. I'm going to keep praying for that Jeep until the Jeep is in my, par in my driveway. And it might take me 20 years. I'm going to keep praying that God restores His people and it may take a century. We're going to keep praying to God. The pattern for prayer laid out in Daniel. Daniel was compelled to pray. Daniel was centered in prayer. Daniel was confident in prayer. Daniel prayed with contrition. Daniel prayed with clarity. But Daniel prayed until it was confirmed. And sometimes we ask ourselves, what does the prayer of one person really matter? What does the difference, what difference does one prayer from one person make? Ask Daniel. One prayer. One prayer from Daniel being centered in prayer. One prayer from Daniel drawing a circle in and saying, I'm not leaving God until you answer the prayer. Restore the nation of Israel back to Jerusalem. What does one prayer mean? Yes, Daniel. Too often, we stop praying because we don't see what we think God should do. And I think it's time the church start drawing circles on the ground. And pray for rain. It's time to start praying for rain. I often think, what if we draw circles? What if we draw our circles? And set our face before God and plead under compulsion. What if we entered... What if we centered down on God, confident in His covenant and His character, and with a contrite heart and broken spirit? What if we are clear in asking God? And what would happen if we just pray and pray and pray until He answered? I believe the glory of God would be revealed through His church and through His people. It's time for the church to draw circles on the ground and pray for rain. Amen? We're going to close with a song. It's more of a prayerful meditation as we, as we just center in on God. I know the altars are clean. I wiped them down myself. There's a little plexiglass still on this one. The altars are clean. If you want to center down on God today and you want to pray, as I'm singing this song, Lord, I need you. It's time for the church to draw circles and pray for rain. And when we do, God will hear our cry. He will hear our cry and He will restore His people.
temptations come away. When I can stand up all church to draw circles on the ground and pray for me. Father God, we cry out to you this morning with broken and contrite spirits. We pray for forgiveness for all the, all the wrongs we have done. We pray that you would restore us today, Father God, and we pray that you would bring the rain, Father God. Pray for the restorer. Uh, the restoration of your people. We pray for the harvest. We pray that, that through the Pottstown Church of the Nazarene, that the Spirit of God will go from here and reach all the people, that we would, we would be able to be an influence into our communities, that the world around us would know that you are Lord, Father God. I pray you light a fire in our bellies and a fire in our soul that when we leave here today, we want to tell the world that Jesus Christ is King Jesus Christ is Lord. Father God, we want to we want to declare the name of Jesus so that your name will be glorified to all the earth. Father, today we center ourselves before you. Today we come to you with a broken heart and a contrite spirit. And we pray with confidence. You are our God. And you will, you will restore us. Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your spirit that's anointing us today. And we pray for strength and wisdom to know your will. And Father God, we pray that the glory of God be glorified in all the earth. We thank you, we praise you, and we give you the glory for this day. In your name we pray all things. Amen and amen. You are dismissed. Thank you for coming. Look forward to seeing you next week.